And I'm going to go ahead and rock and roll. I have 10.03, and if we have others joining us, that would be great. But we'll go ahead and get started out of respect for those who are here on time. So good morning, everyone. Today we are talking about blogging, and the class is entitled Blogging for Dollars. And I would not waste your time with a topic unless I think you can make money off of it. Or if you're a manager, you can recruit from it. So we're going to talk about um, blogging, which is a kind of a microcosm of content marketing. And content marketing is a phenomenal way for you to build your business, um, to generate buyer leads, to generate seller leads. And we're gonna kind of go through all of that. We're gonna talk about how to do a blog from the technical standpoints. And we'll talk about blogging also from the, um, from the standpoint of how to write it, how to choose your topic, uh, how to select a headline and things you can do to make that process very, very simple for you. For those of you who were on the call here just a few minutes ago, I mentioned that I now have a cold. Uh, so bear with me as I'm sucking on a lozenge and may have to blow my nose during this and probably take sip, uh, frequent sips of water. So I'd like to start by asking all of you, um, maybe just put in the chat, uh, which office you're from how many years you've been in the business, and yes or no if you have blogged before in the real estate space. So which office you're from, how many years in the business, and if you have blogged in the real estate space before. If you put that in the chat, that would be awesome. All right, Matt, eight years, Columbus, no, okay. And John, ERA, um, 19 years, awesome, and not really on the blogging. That's great. And so um, Anderson with Miss Kristen, 27 years, like me, 27 years. James, 34 years, awesome, and James has blogged. And Jeremy, Cincinnati, 23 years. Kemper, five years for somebody labeled iPhone 14. Julia, Cincinnati, three years, and not to the blogging. And I'm actually kind of happy to hear this because this means that um, this content will be new for you. And I think when you see what we're going to ultimately do, I think you're going to be kind of rather excited about that. So Ron, 1979, um, Columbus office, 15 years, some blogging, not consistent. And I think that was Denise, right? Awesome. So we've got a variety of experience levels here. And as Wayne pointed out, we're from a number of different offices and markets, which is great. Uh, some of us have blogged, but for the vast majority have not. And actually, I'm, like I say, I'm kind of glad to hear that. That means this will be some content that you can definitely uh, use and take advantage of. For those of you who have blogged, did, have you done that recently? And have you done it using, um, and you can just unmute yourself and just comment, have you used your Moxie website to do that? James, yes, Moxie, awesome, okay. And James, can I ask what, what, and feel free to unmute yourself if you can, if you've got a microphone, if not, then stick to the chat, that's great. But um, may I ask, what did you blog about? What was your topic? And James, I I can't hear you, so I think you might still be muted. How's that? That there you go. Yeah, I created a number of them using Chat GPT, and then uh, they're just on my uh, Moxie website. So, awesome. What was what was your topic? Uh, reasons to use ERA Real Solutions at, for a buyer, for a seller, home warranty, staging. There's a whole number of them. Okay, options awesome. for financing. Perfect. And so I heard you mention chat GPT. That yes. is a, a phenomenal tool. Ha, have you found that to be helpful in, in creating your blocks? Oh, absolutely. I'm not an author. I just give it some prompts and uh, whatever it spits out. I, you know, I review it and put it right in there with a, an image from the graphics library. And off we go. Awesome. I'm so glad that you mentioned that. And one of the biggest obstacles to blogging that I've had in many years of doing this and trying to get my team to do content marketing has been uh, they don't feel like they're a writer and you no longer have that objection. Um, Chat GPT is free to use. It's easy to use. Wayne and I did a workshop on that going back several months. Wayne um, recorded that. 
and that lives somewhere um, <clears throat> out there, and we can get that recording out to you again, but I believe it's on Agent Hub. Is that correct, Wayne? Phen phenomenal tool. E yeah. easy, easy peasy to use. Um, so you no longer, and we're going to talk a little bit about that. So um, other I other reasons why you might want to blog, this 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 sets you up as being the expert in what you are speaking about and people want to do business with experts and so in anticipation of this um session this workshop this morning i came across a quote from inc magazine and it says uh, consumers who read an educational article from a company are 131 percent more likely to do business from that company instead of a competitor um, I want to give you a personal example of this. So my wife and I moved from beautiful Anchorage, Alaska to Cape Coral, Florida back in 2010. And we ended up buying our house sight unseen. The agent we used uh, was great and also worked for the same franchise that I worked for at the time. And that um, fed a lot into why we ended up working with her. But we were very excited about um, buying a boat and having a boat in our backyard. For those of you who don't know, Cape Coral sports um, more mileage of canals than any other city in the world. Uh, we're very proud of that. Many of those canals or most of, those, of that canal system is accessible to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, but it's not all direct access. And when we moved here, we, we owned a sailboat up in Alaska and we were um, wanting a sailboat here but there are a number of fixed bridges. Ultimately decided that a sailboat wasn't gonna be the thing for us, so we were gonna buy a motorboat, um, but we still had to deal with these fixed brid bridges because some of them are only eight feet off the water, some of them are more than that, some of them are less, and depending on where your house is located, if you're on the canal system, you may not be able to get out with a certain size boat. So one of the things that I did was I Googled Bridge Heights, Cape Coral, Florida. And you'll never guess what I ended up on. That's right, a real estate agent's blog post about Bridge Heights in Cape Coral, Florida. And if you were to do that right now, you'll come across probably the first page of Google organically for that search has about 10 um, <clears throat> real estate agent blog posts or websites because of that content marketing. Now, if I go to Google and I type homes for sale or real estate in Cape Coral, Florida, what do you think the top page, what do you think the top page of listings is going to be? Do you think that's going to be individual agents? Wayne, I see you shaking your head. No. <laughs> no, it's not. Who's it going to be? If I do Cape Coral real estate in Cape Coral, Florida, what am I going to find? Zillow realtor folks yeah. that pay folks that pay and stuff. So yeah, you're gonna find the paid ads, you're gonna find the organic advertising, and all of that is gonna be a mix of of the big the big ones, right? Realtor dot just like Wayne said, realtor.com, Zillow, etc. But realtor.com and Zillow are not blogging about bridge heights in Cape Coral, Florida. They're also not blogging about favorite dog parks in Cape Coral, Florida. They're not blogging about uh, the top seven restaurants in Cleveland, Ohio. They're not talking about the best place to get a slice of pizza or a beer in Cincinnati. Um, and I have I have friends that are uh, much more cool than I am, and they're in the real estate business. And one of them lives in Tampa, and she is really awesome at her content marketing. And she puts out these videos and posts that have to do with um, the best place to get a micro brew in, in Tampa, and she features the the restaurant, uh, and it's just really really powerful stuff. So that's why blogging can help you as a recruiter. I put out blog posts that speak to my target audience, which is real estate agents, hoping to uh, generate some interest from them. So if you are blogging and putting out content you are regarded as an expert in that category. So the things that we're going to do today, I'm going to, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about why to blog. Um, then I'm going to show you some examples of some blog posts. Then we're actually going to do a blog post. And this is being recorded, as you know, so Wayne's going to get this out to everyone. This is probably not where you want to try and follow along in your own Moxie website. I would just say watch uh, take maybe take notes um, and then circle back on the video again after the fact. And if you're in my office or in the Southwest Florida market and you want to sit with me individually, I'm happy to do that with you. So 
Um, let me let me begin with the end in mind, as uh, our friend Stephen Covey likes to say. So I am going to um, show you an example of a blog post. So let me do my share screen here. And Wayne, you're going to be my uh, co-pilot and let me know if you are seeing what you're supposed to be seeing. So do you see my, my Cape Realty website again? Yes. Awesome. I'm going to try and minimize some of these little Zoom windows so that I can see my entire screen. So what you're looking at right now is my Moxie website. And as a realtor with ERA, Real Solutions, Cape Realty, et cetera, you have one of these free of charge through your Moxie suite of tools accessible through leverage. Today's uh, workshop is not about how to get to that. Uh, we've, we've done several of that, but today I wanna show you the blog, which every one of you has. And this is where you have the opportunity to really generate great content to make your search engine one of the ones that pops up on page one of Google when somebody searches for something other than just real estate in name of city. Okay, so here's my blog post. Um, it, this is my Moxie website. Again, uh, just a real quick review. If you go to uh, Leverage, you get yourself logged in and you go to Agent Tools, go to the bottom, go to Moxie Works. That's going to bring you to a page that looks like this. You click on the website and then that brings you to here. Um, and you can take a look at that. So if I go to my blog real quick and I click on that, uh, this is an example. I'm just going to go to this one for Barrier Islands. This is one... I actually shot this video like 11 years ago um, when I was when I first moved here and I just created this blog post just for this particular class this morning. And the blog is Discover Pine Island, a hidden gem on Florida's Gulf Coast. This is one of our many barrier islands here in southwest Florida. Um, and it's still recovering from the hurricane, but you know, traditionally it's a very fun and enjoyable place to go, and we're slowly rebuilding. So I did this blog post, and this is what it looks like. I've got a feature picture. This is Tarpon Lodge. I took this picture. Um, I was out there with my parents and my family. We were celebrating uh, their wedding anniversary back in 2011, I think it was, and uh, just took this picture of the lodge. So I thought I would use that as my feature picture, and I'm going to show you how to do that as we make our way through the workshop this morning. And then I have a quick welcome to Pine Island. This is my, my blog post. And I will confess, I did just like James did, and I used chat GPT to help me finesse the, the wording here. Now, I had to prompt it. Um, with, I had to kind of seed it with some, some facts, right? Chat GPT might not know that Pine Island is 18 miles long by two miles wide. I had to kind of put that information in there. And then here is a video that I shot, and I put on my, my YouTube channel, which I embedded into the blog and it continues to go on. And then most importantly, it's got a, um, a redirect. It says, you know, if you're looking, if you're considering Pine Island to, to purchase your piece of paradise, you can find all available opportunities by clicking here. And this link takes you right to a specific search that I did just for Pine Island. And hopefully this will load somewhat quickly. And there we go. And you can set this up in your website, in your Moxie website, very, very easily. All I did was set up a map search, um, created the link, and then embedded it in that blog post. And again, we'll see some of that as we work through the program here. But from a search engine sort of um, optimization standpoint, this is very, very helpful um, to, to get you the rankings that you want. But what would be more incredible would be maybe a post about some other events going on in Pine Island that, again, um, Zillow and Realtor.com are not going to be um, kind of focusing on. So let, let me ask you guys this. I'm going to stop the share for a minute. What other topics do you think that you could blog about um, in your market that might generate interest? Because I don't know anything about Ohio, uh, really. You know, I've never been, I don't think. Um, so what what could you blog about in your marketplace that would be of interest to prospective uh, buyers there or sellers? Interest rates, snow ski locations, right on. Anyone else? Not necessarily uh, uh, real estate related, but it's a it's a high 
a high uh, Google search um, is sports. So, you know, if sports brought you, you know, brought me to your website, um, you know, just, just, so I'm not necessarily looking for a house, but if I'm Googling sports and find you just something different. Yeah, no, that that's, that's great. What other kind of um, activities? Yeah. Th there you go, Julia, things to do in Cincinnati. Can you give me an example, Julia, please? I'm just going to unmute because it's easier. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, there's uh, you know, there's always like weekend festivals that are going on. Cincinnati's known for its German heritage, so we do Oktoberfest is a big thing here. We do a big fireworks festival at the end of uh, the summer for Labor Day. So things like that that people may not know that are just unique to Cincinnati. Oh, that's awesome. Th that is a perfect topic. Um, you know, you know, seven things to do in Cincinnati this weekend, or um, you know, get out and enjoy Oktoberfest this weekend in Cincinnati. And then you could go out there and how would you develop your content? Um, I think there's, you know, there's obviously because they're annual events, there's lots of content from previous years. But I think if you go out there and you can kind of just show people around, I am, um, because I do a relocation, I usually invite all my new people to all the big events that are in the city after they've moved in. Um, and just tell them I'll meet them down there and that kind of thing. So if you video that with a buyer, you actually might be, it could be good video content. I haven't done it, but it would be good content. Yeah, that that would be fabulous. That is like the perfect idea because people are more interested, I think, in lifestyle and things to do than they are just real estate. Because again, you, you can blog about real estate all day long, but at the end of the day, you're trying to compete with the, the big uh, aggregators of real estate information. If you're blogging about lifestyle and things to do, and especially here for my Southwest Florida peeps, you know, people are not just moving here to buy a house. Moreover than not, they are not. They're moving here to buy a lifestyle or a climate. And if you are able to kind of um, share that with people in a compelling and exciting way, they will get to know you as the expert to go to, and they will they will find it fun. Um, one of the things we're going to talk about today is how to promote your blog so that you can get it out in front of people, because many of you might be thinking, all right, so I write this article, maybe shoot some video. Um, what are the odds that somebody's going to stumble upon that just organically with um, with a Google search? And you're right. The odds are probably no. So there's there's a way we overcome that, and that's called marketing the blog. So let me pause right there before I move to the next step and just ask, does anyone have any questions at this point, or would anyone like to offer any other ideas on blog post topics that you could use? All right. That's, that's fine. So, um, Wayne, I have a um, sheet that is like one, two, it's four pages long of possible blog topics you could write about that I put together. And I'm going to make a nicer looking version of this and email it to you. And you're going to send it out to everyone. Um, so here are some of my favorites. Perfect. It's already been mentioned. Um, local events in your area, festivals, art shows, car shows. Um, we have a big Corvette club down here that meets, I think, annually community events. Um, you know, when I worked in the Burnt Storm Marina Market every year, they do an annual um, community party and we would go out there and shoot video and write about it, uh, put that out on our social media. By the way, that's another reason why you want to blog. Let, let me ask you a question. How many of you, post just by show of hands um, or in the chat, if your camera's off, how many of you post real estate related stuff? or community related stuff to your Facebook page. All right. I'm I'm thinking it's it's a fair it's a fair assumption that most of you are on Facebook or some social media channel and you're doing that. So let me ask you this. What is the life expectancy or the shelf life of your Facebook page or post? So if I post something about uh Pine Island Instead of that blog post, if I just took that and put that on my Facebook page just as a post, what is the shelf life of that? Seconds. Yeah, it it just is going to scroll on through the feed. 
How can we increase that? One way that increases that is people liking it and more importantly, people commenting on it. So like with my Southwest Florida leadership team, one of the things that we have agreed to do on our respective Facebook pages is if one of the agents, uh, or I'm sorry, one of my fellow managers posts something on their Facebook page, uh, or even if one of my agents posts something on their Facebook page, I try to comment on that because that will drive it back up to the top of the feed. So you might with your respective teams, I'm sure you're already doing this, um, agree to support one another. But the beauty of the blog post, unlike the Facebook post, is the shelf life of your blog post is extremely long. So um, other potential uh, blog topics are parks, golf, nightlife and entertainment, coffee shops, um, Buyer, you know, you, your buyers have questions, your sellers have questions. You can blog about the typical questions that you receive, uh, investor opportunities and questions. Um, let's see here. Let me find some other uh, activities for kids uh, for sale by owners, writing a blog post that speaks to for sale by owners. And I'm going to show you one today that goes straight to um, expired listings that I think you're going to hopefully get excited about health and lifestyle stuff. Anyway, I'm not going to read through this whole list. I'll get it sent out to Mr. Wayne. He'll get it sent out to all of you. We're going to go ahead and move on to the next thing that I want to share with you. And that is, um, I can find my share screen again. Or, Wayne, you see my, my website again? Yes. All right. Thank you. You're on a blog right now, so. Yeah, no, you got it. All okay. right. Thank you. So um, the next thing I want to do is I want to show you how we can actually do the blog. Um, so I'm going to um, go back to um, close that out. I'm going to go to my control center here. So this is your dashboard within Moxie Works for your website. And the it's it could not be easier to create a blog post. And as soon as you do, your blog will appear in your menu structure on your website. So I'm just going to hit um, new blog post, and now I have the opportunity to write my title and um, enter my article. So what I did before all of this, this is like a cooking show. I've already cooked the meal, right, because we only have uh, a limited amount of time. So this blog post is about the Cape Coral Farmer's Market, which my wife and I enjoy doing. So again, I've already written the blog post, so let me just copy and paste that in. This would be something that you would do. You would, I recommend typing it in Microsoft Word, kind of getting it the way you want it. And if you use chat GPT, copy that text from chat um, and put that in uh, Word and then fix it. Because like when I did my uh, my post for Pine Island, as an example, it talked about beaches on Pine Island. Well, there are no beaches on Pine Island. It's mostly um, bordered by mangrove. So I had to take that part out. So here's my blog post. I use chat GPT to generate this um, headline. And one of the most important things about your post is to make sure you have a compelling headline. So instead of a headline that just says, Cape Coral Farmer's Market, um, I, I wrote it as enjoy the charms of Cape Coral's Farmer's Market. Uh, a sunshine filled day for locals and visitors alike. And again, that really wasn't me. That was mostly chat GPT, but I had to prompt it to do that. So I go ahead and I enter my my blog post. This uh, I wrote, I completely wrote this. This I did not. Um, in fact, this is a blog post, honestly, from like 10 years ago. <laughs> um, I'm just kind of recycling it now for purposes of the class. So I did not use chat for this. But my point on this is, look how short this is. Um, this does not take a lot of time at all to uh, to write or to post. You don't have to have a very lengthy blog. Then the other thing that I wanted to do was recommend that you always, and I like to put it in italics, credentialize yourself at the end of your blog post. So um, this is my self-description, and I would recommend that you do something like this as well so that you kind of introduce yourself um to your reader it helps again for them to get to know you and see that you're a professional and an expert 
The other thing that I always like to do in my blog posts is to come up with some keywords that I'm going to repeat in every blog post there is in order to generate um, search engine ranking for those words. And so back in 2011, when I was selling real estate and not managing, and I had just moved to Florida, and if you know anything about Florida and Cape Coral, Florida, pretty much everyone who lives here has a real estate license. I'm exaggerating only slightly. Um, it is un, un, it's just unbelievable how many people here have real estate licenses. So I knew for me to drive my website up in the search engines, I had to come up with some keywords and repeat those over and over and over again. Um, so this, this is my set of keywords, homes for sale in Cape Coral, Florida. Um, and just to let you know how this worked, works, when I was doing this in Alaska, I lived in a little town called Eagle River. And my blogs would always have the key phrase, homes for sale in Eagle River, Alaska. And on Google, I was organically always in the top three searches for homes for sale in Eagle River, Alaska. And I got so much business off of that website that when I left the state, I sold my website, okay, I sold my website for $10,000 to a guy that worked in my office who saw the potential. So uh, it was generating that much business for me. So believe me, this will work if you do it. Um, so what happens here is if they, if, if I wanted to um, enter a link, all I have to do is uh, hyperlink the text that I want to link. So get, bear with me just for a second. I'm going to pull up my website really quick. Whenever you're in your dashboard, if you just hit view site, it will pop open a new tab for you. And if I go to property search, mine defaults to Cape Coral. So I'm literally going to copy this entire web address in, in the address bar at the top. So I'm just hitting copy. I know you can't see that, but that's what I did. I'm gonna go back here. I'm gonna highlight this text and I'm gonna enter my link by clicking the link button and I'm gonna paste that in and then hit enter and bam, now it's done. Now there's one other thing I wanna do because right now this is a very unsexy uh, blog post, okay? So what I have done is I did create a video about the farmer's market. Give me just a minute to copy that link um, and get that pasted in. So. What you would do is if you create a video and you upload that to YouTube, there is a share link on YouTube that you can grab a hold of. And that's what I just did. And now I'm gonna click the insert edit media here. And all I have to do is paste that link in, bam, there we go, and boom. There is my video of the Cape Coral Farmers Market from 2011, how exciting is that? So um, easy, easy peasy stuff. Now, when I'm all done, I can preview it if I want to see what that's gonna look like. So let me do that. And this is, this is what it looks like. Enjoy the charms of Cape Coral, blah, blah, blah. Here's my text. Here's my link to search for homes available for sale in Cape Coral. Here's my video and here's my introduction to me. Um, now, I could probably pretty this up a little bit more, but for the sake of the class, this works right now for me. And all I have to do is hit publish. Now, once it's published, I should be able to go to my site. I'm going to hit view site. I'm going to go to my blog. And bam, there it is. Let me, there we go. All right, so now, again, maybe people are looking at this, maybe they are not, but here's the thing. The way I would promote this blog post in order to get it out in front of people, for starters, if I copy the URL at the top and then I go to my Facebook business page, which is this, here's, here's our beautiful group down here. Look, there's Wayne. There's Wayne right there. That's awesome, okay? Jeremy's in here somewhere, I'm sure of it. Um, but if I go down and I just wanna um, post this to my Facebook page, I paste the link, 
Give it a second. Um, get that out of there. Hit post. And now I've got my link. Now, this is not the picture I would choose. I would change this. But look what happens when I click the link. Instead of it just being a post with a very short shelf life, if I click it, it brings the viewer right back to my website. And why do I want them there? Well, for starters, they can read my testimonials. They can search for properties. They can learn more about me. Um, they can read my bio. They can kind of get to know me as a person. They can see my other blog posts. So this is an example of how you can promote this out. Social media is very, very simple. But here's where I find that, that you can really put this on steroids. Let me stop the share here for a second so I can see all of you to see if you're nodding off or not. Um, please don't nod off. I'm trying to keep this as energetic as a blogging, a blogging workshop can possibly be. Um, so... So here's the thing. So what I would do when I was doing open houses in beautiful Cape Coral, Florida, I, you know, I, I kind of got my strategy down to um, get people to sign my guest register. And with that, I would get their name, hopefully their phone number, and hopefully their email address. And with their email address, I would send out an e-newsletter. And I would send that out every month. And the e-newsletter would have links to my um, top, my, my two most recent blog posts. So picture this, I'm, this is a true story. So I'm, I'm at my open house uh, just south of Mohawk Drive here in Cape Coral. And lady comes through and we chatted up a little bit and she signs my guest register. I get her email address. I subscribe her. I was using constant contact at the time for my e-newsletter. You can do this through MailChimp. Um, we also have some solutions through Moxie that you can do this through. There's any number of ways you can do it, but it, back in the day, I did not have Moxie at that time, so I was using Constant Contact. And I would just, my, my article would have the headline, a little bit of teaser text, and you always end your teaser text not at the end of a sentence, right? You do it like a newspaper. You do it mid-sentence just before the juicy part okay just before the juicy part and then you go dot 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 and then you click you you enter read more and the read more link takes them back to your blog post so i would send these lifestyle blog post videos out uh and and market updates remember 2011 was a challenging market so i would talk a little bit about that as well but I would try to focus, uh, you know, kind of an 80-20 split, 80% 80 on lifestyle and fun stuff, you know, Cape Coral Farmers Market, JN Ding Darling National Wildlife Refuge out on Sanibel Island, all these fun things to do. And I, I signed this lady up. Never heard from her again for a year. And a year later, after reading my e-newsletter and my blog posts for a year, she calls me up. It's a true story. I'm driving home from a listing appointment. Uh, she calls me up. She says, hi, my name is, and I have since forgotten it. And um, I I met you, you don't remember me. I met you at your open house, you know, a year ago or whatever it was. And I have been watching your videos and reading your articles. And I just really, really love what you put out. And of course, I'm like, oh, well, thank you. You know, and kind of not really sure where she's coming from. And she said, I'm in town. And I just had a falling out with my realtor. And I said, oh, and she goes, I want to put an offer in on a house tonight. Can you help me? And guess what I said? I said, yes, <laughs> yes, I can help you with that. Okay. So um, I showed her the house. I'm not really sure what happened with her realtor, but it did not work out. Um, and by the way, if somebody comes, here's my philosophy, and I don't want to step on any manager's toes or certainly Jeremy's, but if if somebody comes to one of my open houses and says they're working with a realtor, because I have that little box there, you know, where they can check that off, I'm still going to enroll them in, in my e-newsletter. Number one, it does not cost me a dime to do that. It is free. If I send that e-newsletter out to a thousand people or a thousand and one, it costs the same and it's the same amount of work to me, okay? 
So she probably checked the box that says she has a realtor. And had I just gone, oh, okay, and forget that, she, uh, she never would have stayed in touch with me. She never would have remembered me. Um, she wouldn't have been following my contact and I would not have gotten a sale out of it, which she didn't buy that house, but she did buy another house. So I got a paycheck on that all because of a, um, a, a blog and an e-newsletter and promoting that lifestyle stuff because people do enjoy reading that. And we're all good at putting it on social media, but it's so short lived there. So that's why I recommend you take advantage of blogging because it will do so much more for you. And again, you have got to market and uh, prospect your, your blog. So um, any questions on that before we move to the next section? It, by the way, uh, by show of hands, for those of you who I can see, is this good or, or am I boring the hell out of you? <laughs> is this all right? All right, cool. Um, I appreciate that. I get really excited about this geeky crap because this geeky crap is so easy to do, okay? It is so easy to do, and creativity will put you ahead of everyone else. And before you say to yourself, Roger, I'm not creative, I can't shoot video and look polished, you don't have to, okay? It needs to look natural, okay? It needs, your blog needs to be conversational. It doesn't have to be perfect. You don't have to be a grammarian, okay? My wife, formerly an English teacher, would read my blog posts and cringe that I would start a sentence with a conjunction. And I'm like, read, you know, I've read several books on sales and how to craft sales letters, and it's okay to defy the rules of grammar, speak conversationally. How many of you have ever started a sentence verbally with the word and or but? All of us, we do it all the time. Now, don't go crazy with it, right? Don't, don't be so bad at your grammar that you turn some people off, like my wife, the English teacher, don't, don't do that but it's okay to be conversational, all right? So all right, a couple of things I wanna talk about. When it comes to writing your article, um, all right, know who your audience is, be local or even hyper-local. So local would be me writing about Cape Coral. Hyper-local would be me writing about an article about Sandoval, which is one of our communities here in Cape Coral. I've got two agents in my office who live in Sandoval. If they start blogging about Sandoval on a bi-weekly basis, covering what's going on in the community, covering, um, you know, if they're having like maybe a community uh, garage sale, if um, they're having a community get together and picnic, if they continue to blog about that and they use a key phrase, homes for sale in Sandoval, over and over and over again, they're going to drive, tra they're going to drive their uh, website up to the top of the search engine for that because Zillow probably isn't focusing on Sandoval. Okay. So again, there's an opportunity for you to take a tremendous um, step forward. Um, so again, be local, be hyper local, be relevant. We've already talked about sources of ideas for your blog posts. Um, when you, when it comes to writing the article, be yourself, be write conversationally. We've talked about that. Be relatable. Um, keep it simple. Keep it short. Right. Um, I know if I send an email to Jeremy that's more than two paragraphs, chances are he's probably not going to be too happy about having to read all of that. OK, don't be too verbose. OK, and try to immerse some pictures in there. Try to immerse some video in there to keep it um, keep it interesting and do that link back. OK, every one of your blog posts should have uh, no matter what the blog post is about put in there in the meantime. For, for more information on homes for sale in name of your city, town, or community, or whatever it is you want to do, click here and make sure you have that click here link back to a customized search that you can create on your website. Wayne, you and I can do another class on how to do those um, custom searches, right? We can do that together? Absolutely. All right. Um, we've already talked about using pictures, talked about GPT. All right, let's, let's talk about your headline. Uh, keep your headline exciting, and um, it, it's okay to use numbers, okay? Three or five, seven, and 12 are good numbers, like seven ways to make your home more presentable in a challenging market or more sell sellable in a, in a challenging market. And then what would those be? Staging, and you can you can reach out to chat, you do this through chat GPT, and it will write your article for you. Then you need to kind of fine tune it, fix it, finesse it, edit it, make sure it's compliant with fair housing and all that other good stuff. Um, 
let's see here. All right, the next one I want to show you, and this is the one that I really, really, really get excited about. So stand by one. Let me share my screen again. Do 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 do. All right, um, Wayner, are you looking at uh, enjoy the charms again? Wayne, can you see that? Oh, sorry, I muted myself. Yeah, I can see it. <laughs> All right, sounds good. Thank you. All right, so I'm going to go back to my blog here. Here is a blog post that I did for expired listing sellers. So let me let me pull that up. And here's the headline, Turning the Page, A Fresh Approach to Selling Your Home After an Expired Listing by, yay, Roger Morris. I've got this cool graphic, and I will tell you, I stole that graphic from listings to leads, okay? And uh, we'll talk about that in a minute. I wrote this article with the help of my friends at ChatGPT. Um, but again, I kind of had to feed what we would do there. And then, of course, I've got my about me part that I've already told you to uh, make sure that you do. Um, and then I've got this offer, and it is expired listing, now what? And you can, a person reading this article can download uh, this this guide. So let me let me show you how this works. If I click on this, I, I get this. If I if I enter my name and my information in here, and I click the download guide, I'm not going to do it. Well, actually, you know something. I think I will do it. Um, I'm going to put in my middle name here, just so I know if I'm looking at this from a consumer or a realtor standpoint. And I hit download the free guide. And of course, it doesn't want to work because we're live right now, but it worked in dress rehearsal yesterday. All right, I'm not going to make you sit through that. Let me show you what this guide looks like. Um, this is like really, really phenomenal. Give me a second to pull that guide up for you. Um, Shrink that and shrink that. Bear with me, bear with me, guys. I'm going to stop the share and then do another share. I think you're going to love this when you see it. It's really, really powerful. And all right, Wayne, are you looking at my expired listing that failed to sell? Now what? Yes. Awesome. All right. So this is the guide that the person receives. And when I did that, it, it does work. Trust me. Um, I don't know why it wasn't working now. Probably just because we were um, live and, you know, the Internet knows I'm trying to teach a class here. But this is what this guide looks like. And this is available to you through listings to leads. One of the benefits of being with ERA Real Solutions and the Jeremy Raby family of companies is that we have access to listings to leads. Um, and when, when you sign up for your account, which Wayne can help you with, this is the type of collateral material that you get. So here's what this thing looks like. Expired listing that failed to sell, now what? And looky, looky, it's branded to me, which means yours, of course, would be branded to you. And then it goes on to talk about why, why it expired, what to do next, um, what we do to market our properties. And it's just a great branded guide to you. All right. So let me stop that share again. So let me ask you guys, is that pretty good information? Is that is that a good tool to use? All right. So if you're prospecting expireds and you have access to these tools, all that are free, and we're now learning how to use all of these tools together, right? We have a blog. We wrote a blog article about expireds. In that blog article, you can download that expired guide from listings to leads branded to you, okay? Um, is that good stuff? Yeah, I mean, we're, we're using, all right, we're using listings to leads. We're using the Moxie website. Um, we're using the blog. We're using the download guide. And you're probably thinking to yourself, Roger, that just that's cute, but who is going to just out, out of the blue go visit my website when their listing expires, right? Somebody's listing expires in Cape Coral, Florida. I doubt that they're sitting there going, you know, I think I should go find Roger's website and click on his blog because I'm sure he's got an article there about what I should do next. No, 
doesn't work that way. You've got to market your blog. You've got to market yourself. So let me show you an example of what that might look like. So we're going to talk now about direct mail and how we can use that with listings to leads, with the Moxie website, with the blog in order to generate what? What was my promise to you at the beginning of this program that you would be able to generate income? If you're blogging just for the sake of blogging, that's fine, but it's it's not going to help you any in your income in your business. So I want to show you how to make money. All right. So Wayne, I'm going to pull up another resource here. Um, actually, I'm going to pull up two. So give me just a minute, Wayne. All right. I'm going to share screen. Actually, let me ask you guys a question. How could you market this? Instead of me telling you, how, how could you market that? That, that blog post. How might you market that? And if you're writing in the chat, hang on, let me pull that up. Just demute yourself. How might you market that blog post? Social, perfect. How might you get that to a target market? Direct mail. Tana, yay! All right, and ads, beautiful, love that. All right, let's take a look at what that looks like. Fasten your seatbelts, friends, because this is going to get fun. At least it is to me. I hope you're having as much fun as I am. I've had too much caffeine this morning. All right, so direct mail. This is what that might look like. Wayne, are you looking at a postcard? Yes. Okay, so think about this. You've written a blog post about expired listings. And in that blog post, a somebody reading it has the opportunity to download your guide. What if you were to, and they're not going to Google this, what if you were to send them a postcard that says, download your free guide, expired listing that failed to sell, now what? And you've got the QR code there ready to go. It's you're, you're, This is marketing your blog. So that QR code, your links, that would have to link back to your blog post, of course. Um, here is another example of that. Wayne, are you now, yeah, that is not the example I wanted to show you. Hang on, um, pull up my next resource. All right, um, bear with me, expired letter, boom. All right, are you looking at a letter, Wayne, that says date, dear seller name? Yes. Awesome, all right. So here is a letter that I wrote with the help of our friends at ChatGPT. Uh, dear seller, I noticed your listing expired in the MLS without a successful sale. Don't be discouraged. Um, I'm here to help you with that. Um, I've got experience in the Cape Coral market. I understand the challenges. And I, when I did this through chat, I, I told chat or I prompted chat to be empathetic because these people are very frustrated. Uh, and chances are they don't like you. And the reason they don't like you is because you're a real estate agent. And the real estate industry just let them down by a fail to sell. So you're an ambassador of an industry they hate right now. So you have to be empathetic in your approach to these people. And you have to provide solutions. All right. So um, I wrote this letter to, again, kind of uh, get them to go to my um, website and go to hit the blog and then download this thing. Now, my, my vanity URL from my days of selling is expiredlistingrescue.com. That is a very marketable URL. So I don't know what your area code is, but if your area code is 813, you might go into Google GoDaddy this afternoon and you might GoDaddy uh, see if 813 expired listing rescue is, for, is available and you might grab that. Uh, that is a very marketable URL. And then if I were you, I would create a blog post about expireds and then I would link that vanity URL directly to that blog post. And I would put this, this uh, free download that you have through there um, on that so that they can download this. It's branded to you and you have set yourself apart. Um, so anyway, I, I literally took this graphic. Uh, I took a screenshot of it in, um, I have some, some basic create, creativity skills. I used to work for a newspaper doing some advertising and so forth. So I just took a screenshot of this and then gave it an angle and a shadow so it would look a little bit nicer um, and popped it right into the Word document. So can I, I'm going to stop sharing here for a second. So can I ask you guys a question? If I send that Word document, uh, that letter with the graphic in it to Wayne and he sends it all out to all of you, is that an okay thing? Is that a good thing? You guys want that? 
And we know to recreate the wheel. All right, perfect. That's what we'll do. Um, all right, any questions about that? Now, that blog post took a little bit more, um, what's the right word? Tweaking to make happen. So um, I just want to quickly show you in listings to leads how I did that. Stand by one, do the share screen thing here again. Um, where the hell is that screen? Google Chrome, here we go. Um, all right, so Wayne, are you looking at my blog post again? Yep. Good man. All right, so um, listings to leads. If you're not a listings to leads user, what we're about to cover right now is, is probably gonna be a bit overwhelming, but we have classes on this. And in fact, Wayne has a class being taught by the owner of listings to leads. And I think that's, is that next week, Wayne? It is tomorrow, 11 a.m. Well, it's tomorrow. So here we are advertising the next program in the queue. So um, the way I did this, is if you go to PDF guides, um, and there are like a whole host of PDF guides that you can send out. Uh, buyer PDF guides, seller PDF guides. I'm gonna hit the seller button here. Um, so the five dangers of overpricing, what a phenomenal, what a phenomenal resource for you to have. And again, it's gonna be branded to you, um, your name, your email address, your phone number, all that fun stuff. Uh, pardon me for a second. So, uh, great, great stuff. So all I did was I went into, and again, this is where it gets a little high tech. And believe me, I was not born with this in my DNA. Uh, in preparation for this class, I had to dink around in this thing for 20 minutes to try to figure this out. Um, but all I did was I went to settings. Try that again, settings. Um, and then I uh, customized what I wanted to um, promote, which was not that one. Um, try that again. So I want, and as you see, you see, I have to go dink around with it again because I undid what I did the other day. Hang on. Expired. Search. Sorry, guys. See, it's not in my DNA. All right, now, so I, I get the guide that I want. I go to settings, and um, of course, it's not working now because we're live. Stand by, let me do a refresh, see if that works. If I can't make this work in the next two minutes or one minute, I'm going to um, not waste any more of your time on this. There we go. And at this point, I should be able to hit settings. And it's still not doing what I want. Anyway, what you would do is in settings, if you go to um, don't you hate it when it works out in dress rehearsal, but it doesn't work out when you're live in front of an audience. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna pause now because I'm not winning this this battle. I apologize. <laughs> it happens to the best of us. But there is a way in uh, listings to leads, and if I probably poke around in there for another 20 minutes, I'll figure it out, where you can create that very specific download widget for whatever guide you want. So for my local peeps here in Florida, I will re-figure out how to do that, and I'm sorry <laughs> that it didn't work out just then, uh, and we'll get it together. And then maybe tomorrow on the listings to leads daily, Wayne, we can ask Philip about that, but I know it can be done uh, again, the first time I did it, it took me some poking around. Um, uh, any questions about any of that other than how to do what I just showed you I didn't know how to do? It's kind of funny, right? We're, we're here to have fun. Okay. <laughs> All right. So I want to make a couple of more um, points about your blog posts and how you can repurpose them. Anytime you have a blog post, especially where you have that italics at the bottom that talks about who you are, and what your background is and what your expertise is, I recommend that you print those out on a piece of paper and repurpose them as a print article and put those in your open house packets. So somebody would come through my open house, for example, they would, if, if they were engaging, okay, I wouldn't do this for every willy nilly that just walks in, but if somebody was engaging with me in conversation and I felt like they were going to, um, uh, be be somebody that that might be a, a prospect. 
I would offer them one of our trifold folders. And in that, of course, would be my business card. And I would have and other information. I have a personal brochure uh, that I used to do through Vistaprint that was a trifold. And I had three of those. I had one for buyers, one for sellers, and one for expired sellers that I would send out. Um, but in that open house packet, I would repurpose and print out my blog articles, especially that had to do with Cape Coral and the housing market. So um, you print that out, it goes in there, and at the bottom, you've got your about Roger Morris thing or about you thing, and it, it again, credentializes you and sets you up as an expert, right? Because if people come into your open house and they don't sign your guest register and all they do is leave with a cookie, um, you you really haven't done yourself any good, right? And I would use that packet as giving them a gift, and then that would segue into me having them sign my guest register. So I would open that bifold and I would show them what is in the packet. Here's the latest uh, Homes and Land magazine from Southwest Florida. Here, here's the latest market statistics for Lee County. Uh, here's the flyer for this property. And on the back of it, I have the loan comparable. So even if this isn't the property for you, you can see what monthly payments would be under, uh, would be for this, for a similar price property for a variety of different uh, mortgage um, uh, mortgage uh, programs, you know, FHA or VA or conventional. And I would kind of take them through and then, and then, you know, hand it to them as a gift. And they would all, almost always say, oh, thank you. That's great. And then I would say, and may I ask, would you kindly sign my guest register so that I can, um, at the end of the open house, I'd like to give my seller feedback on how attendance was today. Would you mind please signing in? And I would almost never have anyone say no. Um, and that's how you then harvest that contact information to then set them up on your uh, e-newsletter and your follow-up. Of course, you're going to call them the next day to thank them for coming through and see if you can you know, show them properties or what have you. But for a long-term incubation standpoint, especially here in Florida, where people show up uh, and they may be on vacation this year thinking that they're going to buy next year. And so that the blog and the e-newsletter was my way of incubating that prospect for as long as it took to get them to want to, to buy a house. And you remember the story of the lady I said, who called me up after a year and said, you know, she's been watching my videos and so forth. She was a lawyer and her husband was um, like a very high ranking person at George Washington university. They had plenty of money and that was a big purchase. So again, me just adding them to these simple follow-up campaigns worked very, very, uh, very well for me. So um, the next thing I would say to you is for blogging purposes, set up a calendar uh, for the year going forward and try to blog at least once or twice a month. Don't make your goal so high that you don't want to, that it's unachievable. Um, make it realistic, of course, and then get it promoted. So we go from blog posts to social media. The social media links back to the blog post where people can see your testimonials and all that other fun stuff. Direct mail is a great way to to send out specific posts to expireds. Another great example would be for sale by owners. In listings to leads, there is a, um, a downloadable guide there just for for sale by owners. I would be going to town on that. Um, you know, one of the reasons people don't reach out to us um, is because they have to, in, in our industry, to do business with us as a seller, we have to more or less invite you into our living room. Think about that. If, if you wanted to go buy a brand new car tomorrow, you do not have to invite the car salesman into your living room, right? How unsavory would that be? We all like a new car. We don't like the process generally. If it were me, I'd be sending out an email or a letter to um, expired sellers that said something like, wouldn't it be great if you could interview your next agent without having to invite them into your living room first? Learn more about me. ERA Cape Realty and how we go about marketing and selling properties by visiting. And then I would have that blog post or that page there and have a video of yourself there uh, talking about how you market your properties and what you do to service your listings and what you do to get them sold. That's it. We're at the hour. I apologize for going two minutes over. Wayne, um, I guess we'll open it up for questions. Any questions? Hey, Roger, on your blog, you talked about being local or, and hyper-local. If you're working in communities, you know, like we got suburbs, obviously all around Columbus, and most of us live in the suburbs, um, would you suggest 
a blog for each one of those suburbs or what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. If those suburbs are something that you think are frequently uh, searched, um, I would absolutely blog about this. Um, I One of my last listings in Alaska before I left was in a place uh, ironically called Rogers Park. Not after me, I wish, but not after me. And Rogers Park was like way popular. I mean, like way popular because it had an awesome school uh, school. Uh, elementary school and it was very very popular with the younger um, parents and very popular with military and we had a huge military uh, turnover rate in Anchorage Alaska so uh, if there's an an an, an agent in uh, Anchorage right now blogging about Rogers Park I think that would just be like way way smart so yeah it's a great question Matt absolutely if you've got subdivisions or communities that are kind of specifically defined, I would do that all day long. Cape Coral, we don't really, I've, I've mentioned Sandoval. Cape Coral is mostly kind of sprawl. You know, we've got Southeast and Northeast and Southwest. You know, we don't really have too many like neighborhoods. So if I lived in a place, um, I know Rebecca Geiger, she and I have talked about it. She lives in one of the um, communities in Fort Myers that has a real community feel to it called Whiskey Creek. And she's doing a lot of, um, social media posting for that. Blogging would be the next step for her to really kick that up a notch. So um, great question. Any other questions, guys? Hey, Roger, how often do people uh, video blog compared to print blogging? Or is that always going to be a mixture? Uh, I think you are wise to include video wherever you can. Um, and if not, at least do a, a photo of some sort that's of interest. So Burt Storm Marina, which is a marina community, it's got a golf course and it's a marina as the name implies, but it's got about 2000 homes in it, condos um, and, and single family homes. Uh, and it's just north of here. And it's a very unique community. And within the community, there are communities. There's Grand Isle, the, the, the big towers that overlook Charlotte Harbor. Any of those types of um, hyper-local uh, opportunities that you have to kind of blog about that uh, makes sense and um, you, you really want to focus on that but again most most of where we are doesn't have that but where you're able to do that I think it's very powerful did I answer your question Dan I think I might have gotten off on a rabbit hole there no yeah that was good just I uh, was just curious the oh the video I'm sorry the video so yeah uh, so yeah what I was what I was kind of getting at when I would tell my agents to blog there there is no shortage of opportunity for photos like you know i mean because you got the marina there the boats are bobbing in the water manatees come right up to the seawall you've got huge opportunity just to to do a quick video with your phone or just get a nice sunset because it's west facing and just blog you know do do picture photo of the day or photo of uh, not photo of the day i wouldn't do it that often but photo of the month take a bunch of photos throughout the month and then post your favorite one um and then you know for your social media if you really want to get some engagement do that and then ask your followers followers to post their favorite picture of Birdstorm Marina. And that will drive your post way up to the newsfeed again. Any other questions, guys? All right. Well, I've had fun. I hope you've had fun, too. And um, we will see you next time. Great stuff. Thank you, Roger. Appreciate it. Thanks, Roger. You're Thanks welcome, Roger. Bye.